So I'm going to talk about uh, the transformer network for the traveling salesman problem. And this is a joint work with uh, Thomas Rowan from uh, LMU. OK. So this is the outline um, of my talk. Um, so because I have 25 minutes, so I'm going to be brief on some parts uh, of my talk. Um, so like uh, I will start with the story of TSP, but I will be brief for traditional solvers. And then I will introduce the recent uh, neural network solvers for TSP. Um, then our architecture. I will go briefly for the decoding technique and I will present the numerical results and um, I will discuss and make a conclusion. So TSPs, um, so um, you probably know very well the TSP, but just in case, so, uh, so you have a set of uh, cities and the goal is to find uh, the shortest possible path starting from one city, going through all the city uh, exactly uh, once and then come back to the original city. So this problem was first formulated by uh, William Hamilton um, some time ago. And TSP belongs actually to the class, uh, to the larger class of routing problems, which are used every day in industry, you know, for warehouse management, transportation, supply chain, hardware design, manufacturing, and so on. So TSP is a hard problem. Exhaustive search has a complexity of n factorial, but this is the most popular and the most uh, studied combinatorial problem, uh, starting with von Neumann uh, in 51. <clears throat> so you have two, um, two traditional uh, classes of, <clears throat> of algorithms to tackle combinatorial problems. <clears throat> so you have uh, exact algorithms like exhaustive search, dynamic programming or integer programming. These algorithms are guaranteed to find the, um, the optimal solution, but they become intractable uh, quickly when n grows. And then you have approximate algorithms where you trade basically optimality with respect to uh, computational time. And, and for this kind of algorithms, you are going to, de to design um, some heuristic. So it's a simple rule that you usually apply iteratively un until you get to the solution. Uh, complexity for the, these algorithms are usually uh, polynomial. And the, their quality is uh, estimated uh, with respect to the, to, the, to the best solution. So again, I'm, I'm going to be quick um, be because of the time. So, um, we, <clears throat> so we have um, dynamic uh, programming. Uh, we have um, then JROB, um, which is uh, integer programming uh, solver using cutting planes and branch and bounds. And we have Concord, which is a specialized version, uh, a specialized um, you know, version of uh, uh, integer programming with cutting planes and branch and bound. Uh, so Concord today is uh, seen as uh, the fastest um, exact TSP solver um, in, uh, um, currently. So I'm going to go through that. I'm, I'm sorry about this. Um, um, and, and then, so uh, Concord, maybe I'm just going to um, look at so uh, the complexity of Concord. So Concord and Jurobi. So again, they are like um, linear uh, uh, programming uh, techniques. So you can see the complexity is n to the power 2.5, which is the complexity you need if you want to solve uh, a linear programming um, problem. And then BN is the number of branches that you need to do for the branch and, 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 branch and bound technique. Uh, if you look at the experimental complexity for uh, Concord, so here the x axis is the number of, of states, the number of nodes, and the y axis is the average time that you need to solve um, your TSP. So what you see that uh, for a small number n, basically the complexity is, is polynomial, but then when you get you no know, larger, uh, so I'm sorry, so the, the, the dark curve is Concord and the blue is the polynomial approximation. Um, so for small n, this is uh, polynomial approximation is close to, um, to the experimental um, complexity of Concord. And then this is, you know, uh, the red is the approximated exponential function. So you see that when n uh, grows, uh, suddenly, you know, you get the exponential uh, back. Uh, then you have these heuristic algorithms. Um, so the first one is a uh, crystal fit uh, alg algorithms. And then you have uh, insertion algorithms like uh, farthest, nearest, or greedy algorithms. In practice, the, the best one is farthest. And then you have um, Google OR tools. 
which is a set of heuristics that you apply to, to TSP and also a larger set of the record um, routing problems. Um, another class of uh, heuristic algorithms are um, the two opt, uh, three opt uh, algorithms. So basically the idea is to um, switch maybe two edges or maybe three edges to reduce uh, the length of, of the tool. Uh, and then you have LKH, which, uh, is, um, uh, which is probably the best heuristic today for solving uh, TSP. And it's based on the two opt and three opt with um, uh, an excellent way to select uh, the edge candidates. Okay, so you, can, you, so you have this hierarchy of uh, traditional TSP algorithms where uh, you can use the complexity and the exactness uh, of the solution. So of course, um, if you have high complexity, uh, like exhaustive search, dynamic programming, and uh, integer programming, then you get something very, you get the exact solution. But if you start you know, relaxing the complexity, and then you get, um, you know, an approximation with respect to the optimal solution. So neural network solvers. Um, so deep learning, um, you know, deep learning has significantly improved uh, computer vision, natural language processing, and speech recognition in the last decade by replacing, you know, uh, human crafted uh, features by features learned by uh, learned from from data. So for combinatorial problems, the main question is whether deep learning can learn better heuristics from data. You know, so just replacing uh, human engineering heuristics. So this is this is the big question, and of course this is this is an, this is very appealing um, because if you want to tackle um, you know NPR uh, problems, then they may require you know uh, lots of research, years of research, you know, to to get some good solution. And in industry, you have uh, many problems that are combinatorial by uh, by nature. So in the last five years, uh, we have seen an emergence of uh, very promising techniques uh, using neural networks um, that are able to learn combinatorial problems with supervised or reinforcement learning. So I'm going to, to go through um, these recent techniques now. Um, so uh, probably the historical uh, technique is off-field nets. Uh, so it was in uh, 85, and it was for small TSP. But, um, Probably the bionic paper and that uh, I would say uh, starting in this line of research is, is, uh, is Pointer Nate uh, by uh, Oral Vignans and his co-author. Um, so the idea is to combine recurrent neural network to encode, whoops, sorry, to encode, I lost the, the light, <laughs> sorry. So to encode um, the cities. Uh, so you use a recurrent network to encode the cities, and you also use a recurrent network uh, to decode um, the, the sequence uh, of cities uh, that, uh, that, uh, com that compose the, the, the tool. And, and, and then you are using the attention mechanism to know what is going to be, you know, the next city uh, in the tool. Okay, so, so this um, architecture uh, was actually also used success successfully for natural language processing. So it's a precursor of uh, transformers. So that was the work by um, Dima, Badano, uh, Cho, and Yoshua Banjo for, for translation. So the previous work on Turnit actually uh, was um, uh, trained with uh, supervised learning. So they need uh, some uh, approximation of the TSP solution. In this work, they improved. So there was a work by uh, Sammy Benjo and um, his co-author. So they improved by not using any TSP or uh, approximate TSP solutions by using reinforcement learning. Okay, so um, so this way, you know, they, you don't need any more uh, training data. Uh, in this work, um, in the work of Naz Nazari and uh, his co-author, so the idea was to improve uh, again the the original pointer network. Um, so in the, in the original pointer network, uh, the thing is, because you are using a recurrent network, the order of the city, um, you know, is, um, is important, which actually is not. So you don't care, you know, about the order of, of your input cities. This is something that should be invariant. So this is what they did. Basically, they make, you know, the, um, the embedding of the cities uh, order uh, invariant. So in the original pointer net, the way they make the system invariant was by randomly permuting, you know, the input uh, order of the cities. Then in the in the work by Song and and, their, and his co-author, so what they use they use um, a graph neural network that takes as input uh, a graph and the partial tool, 
and then they output uh, a state value function Q uh, in, in reinforcement learning to estimate the next node uh, in the tour. So the training was done by reinforcement learning and a memory replay. <clears throat> In, in this work by um, Johan Brunin and his co-author, so um, they use graph neural networks um, to and supervised learning um, to um, approximate um, the TSP solutions, and they decode also by using beam search. Um, in this work, so um, the 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 objective was to uh, solve the TSP uh, with multiple salesmen. Okay, so that was, uh, that was a supervised learning uh, technique and, and the solution was uh, decoded by beam search um, as well. And it was not an, uh, you know, an iterative process to decode the tool, it was uh, a non-autoregressive uh, approach. Um, then in this work by um, uh, Louis Martin Rousseau and his co-author, so they use uh, the transformer encoder to encode um, the cities and then they decode sequentially with the query composed of the last three cities, um, the tour. They use actor critic uh, RL, and the solution was refined with a, a two opt uh, heuristic. Uh, in this work by um, Kuhl, Van Hoof, and Max Welling, uh, they also use the transformer uh, encoder for, 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 for representing the input cities. And then they, they, they use uh, an attention uh, decoder uh, uh, function to, uh, to to, uh, to decode um, you know, the tour with a query composed of the first city, the last city in the partial tour, and a global representation of all cities. And they train with reinforce and using a deterministic uh, baseline. Uh, in this work, we basically use uh, a deep uh, graph networks with uh, 30 layers by um, supervision using actually Concord uh, solutions to output the probability that an H belongs to uh, the TSP tour. Um, and we decode also by beam search. In, the, in this recent works from last year, so there was um, this work uh, by Wu and uh, his co-author. So the idea was to uh, learn the two opt uh, heuristic. So, so um, it's, if you want to uh, look at all the possible um, moves you can do, this is something which is exponential. So you need to make uh, a choice which um, couple of uh, which pair of uh, edges you are going to, to switch so you can learn that. And that was the idea of this paper. And in this paper, um, so they use Graph Neural Network and Monte Carlo Tree Search uh, inspired by, by AlphaGo to explore, you know, um, um, further, uh, I would say, uh, possible next candidates in the tool. So when you use the classic uh, autoregressive methods, when you make a decision, you cannot go back. So you would like, you know, to look at ahead uh, in the future. So you can use for that Monte Carlo tree search. <clears throat> so uh, let me now introduce uh, the art architecture that we propose. So we cast basically the TSP uh, as a translation problem, where the um, uh, input language, the source is a set of two points, and the output language, the target, uh, is basically a sequence of indices with minimal length. So the motivation is clear today is that transformers um, are, are getting very good for uh, NLP and for computer vision. So we wanted to uh, see what was, um, uh, what was the quality of transformer for combinatorial uh, optimization. And we train with reinforcement learning by actually using the same setting as uh, Kuhl, Van Hoof, and, and, and Max Welling. So this is the proposed architecture. Uh, so let me go into details. So the first part of the architecture is going to do the encoding. So you have the set of uh, 2D coordinates of the cities. And then what you're going to do is that you are going to use the self-attention mechanism to get a good representation of your uh, input uh, cities in a such a way that it would be easy for the decoder you know, to find um, the shortest path. Um, here I'm using um, so the standard um, um, attention, uh, net, attention um, uh, function. Um, there is just one head here, but we are using multi-head attention, residual connection, batch normalization in this case. Uh, and then you have a Z, which is, um, uh, which is like um, a, a star token, which is uh, like a, a city that uh, doesn't exist. But uh, I will explain later why, why we are using this one. And the decoding is autoregressive, so we are going to decode one city uh, at a time. Uh, so let's suppose now that we have decoding the first T cities, 
in the tour, and we want to predict the next city, so t plus one. So for this, the decoding will um, be composed of four steps. So let me start here with the first step. So for the for the first step, we we're going to start decoding with um, you know the the city that was from the previous uh, iteration. So let's say that the previous iteration gave us you know the city of the index i t. So what we what we're going to do is that we are going to take the uh, encoding representation of the city i t. Okay, so that will be the input of our decoder. Um, of course, uh, what we want to do at the same time is we want to remember the order uh, of the cities. So for this, we need some positional encoding. So the, the simplest one is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, until t, OK? Uh, but here, we are using the traditional positional encoding uh, of transformers You know, with sinus and, and cosine uh, functions, which are independent of the size of the, uh, of the sequence, OK? So this is, the, this is, this is you know, our um, input of our decoder. Then what we're going to do is that, so we, are, we have um, our input. And what we're going to do is that we are going to, um, um, uh, you know, uh, we are going to uh, encode this city by using all the cities in the partial two. OK, so we want to use all the information that we have uh, from the partial two. So for this, we are going to use, again, the safe attention uh, mechanism um, that is going to uh, give us, you know, the query uh, for this um, time t here. So for this, we are going to use L uh, layers uh, as well. Then once we have, you know, the query, we can, uh, we can now ask, you know, what is, the, what is the next city? So for this, we are going to use an attention mechanism, uh, you know, between the query and the cities that has, uh, have not been visited so far. Okay, so again, this is uh, the attention. And here we are using uh, a mask of the cities that have already been visited. Okay, so we are doing this mechanism uh, query um, by uh, query and then um, and then uh, attention to the next cities. Uh, we are doing that, you know, l times. This is n number of uh, decoder layers. And then we have the final query, which will use only a single head attention because we are just uh, interesting in one uh, in one in one node here. So, so we just want to know, uh, we just want to have a probability uh, of, uh, you know, the next city. And we are, going to, we are going to use this probability of the next city, and we are going to sample it, you know, by using um, the simple Bernoulli, uh, you know, uh, Bernoulli sampling during training, and, and, and we, we can use greedy uh, during uh, inference, okay. So if we, if we compare our architecture between uh, for transformers between uh, NLP for translation and TSP for combinatorial optimization. So first of all, um, the, for, for TSP, the order of the input sequence is not really much, which is not the case for NLP. Uh, the, order, the, the order of the words are very important. Um, for the output sequence, the order of, uh, is, is quite important, of course. And this is a solution of our problem. And for this, we are using, you know, positional uh, encoding for both TSP and, and NP. Um, for the TSP encoder, we are using the batch normalization. So differently from um, the NP encoder, which uh, use, we usually, uh, you know, uh, uses uh, layer normalization. So here it makes more sense because what we do is that we batch, um, you know, uh, maybe let's say 1000 uh, TSP of the same size. So we know in this case that batch normalization is doing a better job. For the TSP decoder, because we are uh, decoding one uh, city at a time, uh, it's, it's, it's autoregressive, um, then um, we are using the layer normalization uh, from, from an AP. Uh, TSP uh, transformer uh, learns uh, by reinforcement learning, so we don't need to have any uh, training data. And, and both tra uh, transformer for an LP and TSP have quadratic complexity. So this is n squared times the number of layers um, that you are using. Um, then we compare with the uh, closest uh, models uh, from Cool and the Don. So we are also using uh, the same transformer encoder, but the decoding architecture is different. So in our case, um, the query um, is, uh, uses you know, all cities uh, in the partial tour. Okay, by, by self-attention. And in the case of, of Cool, um, 
the choice was to use uh, the first cities and the, the last city in the partial tour, and then the global representation of, uh, of, of all cities. Um, for, for the Don, the idea was to use the last three cities. For the decoding process, we also start differently. So for, um, for the encoder, we have, as I say, we have a city, um, which is a random um, vector at the beginning, which is like a city that doesn't exist. It's like a ghost city. And, and then we are going to basically uh, query this city with all the other cities um, by using the self-attention uh, encoder. And the idea was to find, you know, um, we want this to talk to all other cities in such a way that it will give us, you know, the best uh, starting point when we start the decoding. So this is really similar to in NLP when you have, uh, you know, a token for classification, for example. Okay. So in the case of Krull, the uh, starting query is um, is some random um, uh, vectors um, and and the global representation of the graph. And for the don, it's it's some um, uh, random vectors from for from the last three cities. So decoding techniques. So I don't have much time, so I'm going to probably skip this part. So the idea is uh, we want to have a probability of the tour. Uh, the way we get the probability of the tour is by uh, using the chain rule. So the probability of the tour is having the probability of the first city given uh, given the the cities, uh, then uh, given the the original points then times the probability of the second city given the first city and, and, all, uh, and all the points and so on, okay? So but basically what you want to do, you want to maximize the product of this conditional probability that is learned by a, a neural network. So if you do, ex uh, you know, exact search, then you, you go back to um, um, uh, factorial uh, complexity. Uh, if you do greedy search, uh, you just take the maximum, then the complexity is, is linear. And you can do, you know, um, uh, sophisticated sampling techniques like uh, beam search or Monte Carlo tree, uh, tree search. And the complexity will be, you know, uh, times B, which is the number of um, uh, possible uh, beams you're, you're going to use. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to skip that because of the time. So numerical results. <clears throat> so here uh, for this column, uh, this is the results for TSP uh, 50, so when you have 50 uh, cities, TSP 100 for 100 cities. Objective is the length, so the, the lower the better. And the gap is basically the difference between you know, the solution that you have with respect to the optimal solution, which uh, here is Concord. Okay. T time is the total time um, for 10,000 uh, TSP. Um, and I time is basically difference time. So if you do it in, in, uh, in serial. So what happens if you want to just compute one uh, TSP, okay? Uh, this is the methods for, uh, you know, integer programming with Concord and Joby. Uh, these are heuristic algorithms with, um, you know, the best one is LKH uh, tree. Here you have neural networks um, with greedy sampling. So you just take, you know, at each um, decoding step, you take the maximum of the probability. And here you have neural networks and you're trying to do a, you know, more sophisticated sampling by using beam search or Monte Carlo uh, tree search. Okay. So this is our model. So this is the model. So we are doing, you know, um, we are 0.3% um, uh, for, for the optimality gap with respect to Concord. And if we uh, do a little bit of, um, of, of sampling with, um, uh, with, with beam search, then we get something very close to, uh, to the optimal solution. For TSP 100, um, if we do greedy, the optimality gap is 1.4%. And, and if you use beam search, you get to 0.39%, uh, so uh, something close to, um, to Concord. Um, so so then, then just for fun, so we wanted you know, to look at visually uh, the TSP solution. And what we observe for TSP 50, um, we observe that sometimes, you know, the neural network was able to do a slightly better job than, than Concord, you know? So you can see this is the length and again, the lower the better. So sometimes, you know, you get, you get better solution. And the thing is Concord is an exact solver, but when you use LP, um, um, when, you, when you need to solve LP problems, then you need to uh, have a stopping condition with a tolerance factor. And also with a branch and bound, you know, you also have, you know, machine precision. So sometimes for fun, uh, the neural network does slightly better. So these, these are other 
solution. So you see that uh, we don't uh, we don't do as good as Concord, but we are we are pretty close. This one and this one as well. Okay, here you can see the um, zero shot uh, learning. So you you train on uh, TSP fifty, and then you try on the double side, you know, on TSP one hundred. So what you are able to get is a gap of you know uh, one point, uh, let's say uh, four percent. Um, uh, close to, to it's, it's close to Concord. <clears throat> the same also if you go from 100 to 200, you see that uh, this is Concord length and this is this is the motor length, so it's it's quite close. So this is this is encouraging. Uh, experimental complexity. Um, so uh, of course we know that um, uh, so the complexity is going to be exponential for uh, Concord and this is going to be um, polynomial for neural networks. So. Um, Discussion. So in this work, we, we essentially focused on the architecture. Um, and so like for natural language processing, for computer vision, um, the transformer arch architecture is actually also a good uh, architecture if we want to solve combinatorial problems like, like TSP. So it, we did that for TSP. I suspect that if you try for other combinatorial problems, transformer will also do a good job. Um, and we improve, you know, the learn uh, heuristics uh, with some optimality gap close to uh, close to zero percent. Uh, further developments we can do: we can have better sampling techniques, uh, like a group beam search or Monte Carlo tree search. We can also add some uh, heuristic to get intermediate rewards for reinforcement learning. We know this is something that can that can improve the result. Um, so something also we should be very cautious is that, so the traditional solvers like Concord or LKH, they still outperform learning solvers in terms of performance and generalization. Uh, neural network uh, solvers are faster, but they are not you know, uh, as good as uh, the standard solvers. So what's next? So something which is interesting actually is that um, in the case of computer optimization, we can generate um, an infinite number of training data in some sense. So what we observe is actually um, the, 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 the optimality gap, you know, still decreases. It just, you know, we stop the learning process, but it still, you know, continue to decrease. Uh, also the question, can we improve further the architecture or the learning paradigm? And one big question is how do you scale to larger TSP? So here 100 is, is a small size. So how do you train when you have 1000 cities or 1 million cities? And this is a big issue because, um, because you would get you know, the quadratic complexity that uh, is going to be um, you know, a big limitation for the GPU memory. We can also consider harder um, TSP problems. Um, uh, and I guess, um, and I know that for this conference, people will talk more uh, about this. Um, we can also consider harder computer problems um, where Jurobi cannot be used. So um, you, here you have a linear uh, objective or quadratic objective with a convex polytop, but you can think about non-convex objective, uh, I don't know, uh, log of x with some um, you know, non-linear constraint because of x, uh, for, for example. And, and also one next, what can be next is, uh, you know, you can leverage learning techniques to improve traditional solver. So if we look at, you know, branch and bound techniques, which is, uh, you know, a core technique um, for traditional solvers, um, so they rely on some human engineer heuristic, like a strong branching to decide, you know, where you're going to do the branch. Um, and and this, is, this, is, this is excellent, but this, this is really costly. So recently, there was a, a paper, there was, two, there, there was uh, papers by people um, like Andrea Lodi and also Nair and, and, and Vignals. Um, they uh, wanted to learn basically this, uh, this heuristic in such a way that one, so training would take a lot of time, but then, you know, using uh, doing an inference would be would be very fast. Uh, we can also focus on going beyond, uh, you know, human-based heuristic and trying to learn novel heuristic for faster on branch and bound technique. Conclusion: So I think combinatorial optimization um, is very interesting uh, because it's pushing the limit of deep learning. So traditional solvers still provide better solutions than learning models. Uh, of course, traditional solvers have been studying for for some time now. Um, and the interest of applying deep learning combinatorial optimization has just uh, started. So this topic of research, I think, will naturally, you know, uh, uh, develop in the coming years because combinatorial optimization problems uh, like assignment, routing, planning, scheduling are used every day, uh, you know, by companies. So there will be a, a strong interest developing these techniques. And also, what 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 I, what I see is probably we will have novel software 
uh, that combine continuous discrete optimization and learning techniques uh, in, in the coming years. Um, okay, thank you very much for, for your attention.